So in today's video here, I'm taking a look at the new Yuli Phone Armor 9. Now this is one of those drop resistant, heavy duty phones, ideal for people in trades. So for tradesmen, you might need a thermal imaging camera depending on what your job is, and this one has one built in. We also do have an endoscope that's another accessory. So if you're a mechanic and you need to get a camera down in a certain point, so say an engine bay, then this is a particular phone that can actually do that. So the spec of this phone isn't anything amazing. So it has the Helio P90. It's got eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage, but it does actually perform okay. Now we've got a 6.3 inch IPS panel with this and a very, very large 6,500 minute hour battery which happens to have some amazing battery life. It's gonna last most people for about three days, this particular phone, before you need to charge it. So inside the box, you'll find they use a manual tempered glass screen protector, USB to type C, micro USB to type C adapter. We've got our cable here. So in red, it's type C to USB. There's also a leash and the charger. The charger is 18 watts, the maximum output. Now this particular phone here has a huge battery. It's 6,500 milliamp hours, and it does take well over two and a half hours to charge. So a long time. Now there are also some accessories that you can get for this particular phone one of which is the endoscope right here. Now there will be a sample of this endoscope in action. So this particular endoscope here, you can see nice and long. Now this is a stiff cable that they've got. So you can insert this down, for example, engine bays or looking inside pipes if you're a plumber. So that's why this really is an ideal tradesman phone with a few extras, of course, like the film imaging camera. So that plugs into the side of the phone, which I'll show you where that it plugs in exactly. There's a screw there so you can screw it into place. It's not gonna pop off. And right at the end of this, the very, very tip here, there's actually uh, the camera, of course, there and some LEDs. Now, there are these tips that you can screw onto it, ends here. Now, why you would want to do this? Well, there are actually one that has a little hook on the end of it. There's another with a little mirror, so a right angle, so you can look at different things. And that is rather handy to have. And they include this little torque screw there as well for attaching uh, those parts there. And then we have the case. So again, aimed at tradesmen, this is great, a very, very heavy duty clip on to your belt style case for this particular phone. Now this thing is very chunky and solid, but you're probably not gonna worry about that. You just want a phone that is durable. And this is certainly a durable case, also the phone itself. And rubber protection around the outside, it slots into this. We have right here the clip, so that goes onto your belt. And this then clips into the back of it right here. Okay, and it's easy enough to remove that and insert it on and off, okay, from your belt, and just a little clip there as well to secure it into place. So you don't have to use the belt clip, you can simply just take that off and attach it to your gear with this as well. Looking at the back of it, we have this rubber coating here and it does state IP68, four LED flashes. Now the camera set up on here, so we've got the flare thermal imaging camera. This one has five megapixels, the camera next to it. Our main 64 megapixel sensor, and there's a two megapixel one here for depth as well that this uses. So right down the bottom here, we do have our loudspeaker, and I'll give you a sample of this later on in the review. And you can see we've got all these torque screws around the outside, which is screwing this backing plate onto the metal frame around the outside. Down the bottom, we've got our Type-C port here. So there's a flap that covers over it. So unfortunately, you have to take this off each time, and it can get a little bit annoying but the battery does last for a really long time, this, as you'll see later on. So once the flap is down, that's when we have our IP68 rating. If these little covers are not over it, then of course we don't have that rating. There's a microphone right here, and right up the top we do have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Now this one also under one of these little flaps here, so you need to pull that off to access it. Now it does have FM radio, so if you plug in a headset, that acts as the antenna. Audio quality out of this jack is okay. It's certainly not the best I have heard though. On the left side, we've got the pogo port connector. This is for the endoscope. So you have one screw here to remove and then you just screw it into place. And this is our power button. In fact, no, this is the launch button. So you can allocate this to your own application, this launch button, volume up and down. Now these metal buttons here are of a good quality, but they do rattle around. You can see them moving slightly here when I touch them. So they have a bit of a rattle to them and they do make a little bit of noise. And then on our right side here, we've got the flap. So inside this, you've got micro SD card support and two nano SIMs, power button, and this is the always on fingerprint reader, which doesn't work particularly good. And I'll show you a little bit about that later. 
So the screen in this one here is IPS. I'm measuring about 430 nits maximum brightness and it can be made out in direct sunlight, but it's not the brightest screen out there. So full HD plus resolution, the touch digitizer I find does work well and it does have the mode for gloves as well. If you happen to be wearing gloves, then it should sense them and still allow you to actually touch the screen when you put it, of course, onto that mode. So blacks actually look all right for an IPS panel. It does have a bit of a bluish tint out of the box, I found. And overall, for this type of phone and these big massive bezels around the outside and the rubber here, it should be quite durable. It's covered with Gorilla Glass as well. So this one should handle those drops and falls without cracking. And you can put that tempered screen protector that I showed you that comes within the box on it as well, just to be even safer. So one thing that is a slight annoyance that the ROM itself in the display settings, we have no option here to adjust the white balance. You often see this in almost all of the phones I review. You'd have a standard, an auto or a saturated option. And then you can also just tweak the white balance to be a cooler white or a warmer. That's completely missing here. So the always on fingerprint reader for me in my pocket, I find that the sensor accidentally gets rubbed up against and it creates a lot of misreads. And what happens with those misreads, it ends up blocking it and you go to use it and it will just say too many attempts and you need to enter your password. But I'll show you how fast it is. Or should I say how slow it is? Like it just did nothing then. Oh, there we go. It's come up. So I'll do that again. I'll lock it, unlock. And it's a little slow at times and quite inaccurate, okay? It's very inaccurate, that particular fingerprint reader for me. So we're running Android 10 here. The performance of the UI is reasonable. I mean, this is running stock Android, so there's not too much bloat. Where we have FM radio here on board, they've got various different other modes that may be handy to some. So underwater mode, gloves mode as well, screen recording too, which is handy to have in the ROM. And this right here, so toolbox. Toolbox is really just for tradesmen. So there's lots of other little things in here that you could use. And not that you would rely on a mobile phone to get your measurements and something's level, but you can see that there's a few in there that are, are handy to have. I even got picture hanging as well there and a noise test. So decibel meter could be handy in your workplace maybe. You wanna see how loud it really is. The jackhammer going on in the background, so then you can do that. And even um, heart rate there too as well. So there are other applications that are just a course because of what we've got. So we've got the Fleur camera, my Fleur, and this is to do with the thermal imaging camera here. So just quickly briefly show you this. So you've got your different modes, you've got your camera mode, and then we do have our measurements. So you can show them as well to have that come up, the range. And I'll give you a very quick sample now of my engine, of my car, which was quite hot, just to show you that what this is capable of. Now I use actually a thermal imaging camera in my reviews a lot to show you how hot devices are, but here's that sample. So you just need to move it over to the top of where it looks the hottest point with our meters right here and it'll tell you the temperature. And you can see right here it even works for, well it works for anything including my cat, the top of her head, she's been in the sun here, was actually quite hot up to almost about 50 degrees you can see here, because she's got a black coat, of course. So it does have GPS on board. It actually does work quite well. We get an accuracy up to one meter. It's not dual frequency, but it will still see a lot of satellites in the sky. And in general, I haven't really had any issues at all with it. And we do have, of course, wide vine level reset. And why do I say of course? Because I expected this. Chinese phones don't normally bother about this. So this means Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, you're gonna be stuck in standard definition with this particular phone here. And this is the Antutu score, so nothing amazing. Adequate kind of performance. The weakness is the GPU that this does have. So not really a game to play the most demanding games with, but I'll give you a test later on. I'll show you gaming performance. And it's it's okay, you can play most titles out there. You just have to lower the settings down. That's really all you need to do with this particular chipset. So UFS 2.1 storage, and you can see that these speeds are okay. They're reasonable. It's not exactly gonna bottleneck the particular phone here. Uh, random writes are a little low though at 24, 25 megabytes per second. It just means installing apps won't be the fastest. So you can't expect flagship performance from a phone like this anyway. Now this is where it is really good, where it really excels, is the battery life, but this here is the charge time. So close to almost 200 minutes to fully charge the very large 6,600 milliamp hour battery. So it's a huge battery in this. And as you see, it gains record times here. So I calibrated the display to 200 nits of brightness and we are looking at almost, well, over 
17 hours there, almost 17 and a half hours runtime is extraordinary. So what does this translate into? This means this is a three day, maybe even four day mobile phone before you need to charge. For most people out there, if you don't use the screen a lot or if you don't game a lot or anything, it's just gonna go and go. This battery is very, very good. And those are the stock applications you have there. As I pointed out, well, FM radio's on board. There's no real bloat. Well, a couple of apps maybe, these ones, but that's it. Here's a quick sample now of what you can expect from the Endoscope. So this camera, it's only HD, so 720p maximum. The frame rate's not wonderful, but of course you can get into areas that you couldn't with a normal mobile phone camera. You can get right down to take a look at, for example, fan belts, the pulleys, and engine bays. You could also insert this and put it into, for example, pipes. It is IP67 water resistant there, so up to 30 minutes, I think it can be submerged without any problems. And there are some LEDs right at the very tip. So depending on what you need this for, it might come in really handy to get this optional endoscope accessory. Now onto our audio. So I've placed a voice call on this one. It sounds very similar to other phones and no real major issues. The earpiece, however, I think because of the waterproofing, sounds a tiny little bit muffled. Same goes for the loudspeaker. The loudspeaker is very loud. It's on the bottom of the phone, just on the underside here. And here is a sample of it at 100% volume. So gaming performance on this one, the Helio P90 is not the most powerful chip out there. It doesn't have the most powerful GPU. However, you can game, you can play all those modern new titles. You just need to lower settings down. So this title right here that I'm looking at, the first level of Shadow Gun Legends. Graphically, it's quite intense. It does push the system hard, but it is playable, offering a decent frame rate on the high setting. Other games like, say, Call of Duty or PUBG, you can play them on this phone. Just need to use, of course, lower settings for this particular chipset, the Helio P90. So right now, this is a front-facing camera, and I find that it is rather poor here with the exposure. Not great at all. Skin tone's not good. Audio quality either. It's quite weak. It's got a poor bit rate. Now that noise that buzzing that's actually not the phone that's the cicadas bugs in the pine trees singing away now watch what happens when i step now into the sun here you'll see that it's overexposing my face it looks too wide maybe a little bit red but look at my forehead here so very poor quality really with the cameras the video performance here is not great for front-facing video this is a sample of the rear camera video so we just have 1080p maximum so the cameras definitely aren't the strength of the Armour 9 here. No 4K option. Sound wise, not the best either. I mean, overall it's good. It should be fine for using on site, for example, if you need to record anything, instruction that's going on, the job, whatever. Good enough quality, I think, for that, for 1080p, but not the sharp 4K video. Okay, so the video quality is pretty bad. It's awful, it's not great, but these photo samples I'm showing you now, front-facing camera, does do okay, and the rear main camera, which is 64 megapixels, the Samsung GW1, does take a nice photo. You can see this one here of Vera, my cat, lots of detail, and night mode actually does work. So the cameras are at least saving it a little bit here. They're better than I expected. You can see a clear difference between the night mode off right now and then taking a picture with the night mode. It certainly does brighten it up. A durable phone that can take a beating. It's waterproof, IP68 rating. It can take all of those knocks that if you need a phone to take those knocks, it has it. The other thing is, if you do actually need a thermal imaging camera for your work, you've got it built in to this phone. The application does work well. You can take photos and video to show perhaps clients later on or just for your own work. And then we do have the accessory here, which is that IP67 rated endoscope camera. It's only HD is the full quality you can get with it, the maximum quality, but it's not too bad. And it depends if you actually need it. Of course, you can get it to show video of wherever, engine bays or getting into tight little spaces. You're able just to just insert it, put it right through, uh, which is great to get into pipes or plumbing or whatever for plumbers maybe that you need something like that. So overall, as a phone, it is going to tick the boxes there for its durability. It's the camera, the fingerprint reader. The battery life is really, really good. So it goes for like three, four days for most people. So thank you so much for watching this review and I hope to see you back in the channel with more up and coming videos.